Hello there, welcome to Yearly Reviews, the weekly web series reviewing the video games that I played for the year of 2020 because I had nothing better to do during a pandemic. So without further ado, let's jump right into this week's review. Let's talk about mascots for a second. It seems that every console and game studio has a mascot of its own. Nintendo's got Mario and Link and Kirby and... Sega's got Sonic the Hedgehog, Ubisoft has got Rayman, I guess, but for the PlayStation, there's never really a defined mascot, although there have been some attempts and some characters are still around like Spyro the Dragon or Abe from Oddworld, but there's one particular mascot that I have in mind, and it seems like I'm bringing back this image again. This will probably be the last time you see it though. This is a compilation of mascots from Naughty Dog, you know, back when they were good. We've already covered Uncharted and The Last of Us, and I don't think we'll be playing Jack and Daxter anytime soon, so that leaves us with the original. Cash Banu- I mean Crash Bandicoot. So let's not waste time. This is Crash Bandicoot 4. Following after the events of Crash Bandicoot Warped, and for those of you who still haven't played Crash Bandicoot Warped, or five of you, SPOILERS! Doctors Neo Cortex and Entropy escaped the time rift they were imprisoned in before and plan to take over the multiverse. Meanwhile, Crash and Coco, with the help of their mask Aku Aku, find Lani Loli, one of four quantum masks who have powers over time and space. Learning of Cortex and Tropy's plan, they seek to find the other three quantum masks while they travel back in time to also realities, meeting some familiar faces along the way, including Torna, who hasn't made an appearance since like 1996, and Dingo Dive, who is apparently the reason why this game is rated 12. Crash 4 returns to the series' as usual cartoony and fun platformer gameplay the same way that the Insane trilogy tried to do, and it's just as grand as ever. Platform wing and movement feels very tight and responsive, and the multiple settings in each level deliver a unique blend that barely makes you forget it once you've played it. The general design of the characters themselves feel very fun and memorable. Speaking of which, what was especially memorable was the fact that you can play as multiple characters with their own multiple playstyles. If you're worried about the game being too short, then if you're dedicated enough, there are a large number of levels including boss battles, side-scrolling levels, vehicle sections, and other such things. However, at that variety comes a cost, and that is the difficulty. What I'm trying to get at is that this game is difficult. I think this comes more in line with the different sections of the new character's story, particularly the levels where you control Cortex. I never had fun controlling him, the controls felt stiff and rigid and his main attack is pitiful, even though it's not really an attack per se. Plus, you know what I was talking about earlier with the multiple levels? Well, sometimes it can be really repetitive. Let's say, for example, that you want to complete all of the game, 100% complete it in fact. Well, to do that, you have to complete every level in the main game, every inverted version, which is just a mirror level, and if you don't die in the main level, you get a flashback tape, which are insanely difficult, and even an inverted version comes with it. Not to mention, you get time relics and gems galore on your journey. If you want to grasp on how difficult this is, check out Categories' video on Crash 4. It's a good watch. But for the sake of this review, we're going to keep things brief, we'll try not to get into a completionist point of view. But in the case of Crash Bandicoot 4, this was definitely a fun experience to go and delve into. If you've enjoyed the previous Crash Bandicoot games, then you'll definitely love playing this game. It's a fun, albeit difficult platforming game that will certainly try to both entertain and challenge you at the same time. But if you try to complete every single thing, it's probably going to end in both tears and madness. And it just goes to show that even with the right team and creativity, the Bandicoot will still live on after 20 years, several publishers, platforms, and different damn game genres. Hey folks, thanks for sticking to the end of this review. If you like what you saw here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys making comments on these videos. They make up my day and I read every single one of them. If you like what you saw here, feel free to look at the newest review and look at the latest review. And if you want to watch more, feel free to hit that bell so you know when a new review drops. See ya and thanks for watching.